morning. This is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Jackrabbit fans from all over are back home after a big weekend in Frisco, Texas for the FCS National Championship. That includes the Kello fan buses. Three people on board played football for South Dakota State between 1975 and 1980. They reunited with many of their former teammates in Frisco. We're all part of a family here, and it's just glad to be a part, like Jerome said, of the South Dakota State family. It feels like yesterday, even though it's been over 40 years, guys. But uh, And we got to see some of our, our former players. We haven't seen them in 40 years. We've seen them this weekend. It was awesome. The buses arrived back in Sioux Falls around 5 o'clock yesterday and then made a trip to Brookings to drop off the rest of the fans. Meanwhile, SDSU will be celebrating their FCS championship win today. It starts at 5 p.m. at the Sanford Jackrabbit Athletic Complex. The mood on campus is one of excitement as students look forward to celebrating the national championship with the coaches and players. At the campus bookstore, Jackrabbit gear has been flying off the shelves. The bookstore director says as soon as the game was over, she was on the phone giving companies the go-ahead to start printing national champion on Jackrabbit gear. We have a company out of Minnetonka, Minnesota called Signature Concepts who started printing immediately, had everything done between five, six hours, put it on a U-Haul, and it was here at 6 a.m. this morning. So it's pretty amazing that they were able to turn around not only just t-shirts, but sweatshirts that are screen print, tackle twill, they have hats, there's kids. So it's just amazing how fast that stuff, that they're ready and prepared and willing to work on a Sunday evening to get it here for the fans. Healy says not only are they busy at the store on campus, they're also filling hundreds of online orders. <laughs> the students at Augustana University are connecting through gaming. This school year, Augustana added eSports to its list of student activities. It has quickly become popular with 92 students gaming together and one competitive team. It's been really great. Um, it's especially nice to play with people you know because playing by yourself on League, the community can be kind of toxic. So it's nice to have people that you know like are supporting you and want to play well and win. The club's competitive team is preparing for their first collegiate national competition, which begins in a couple of weeks. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. All right, good morning, Perry. Good morning, everybody. Waking up to fog yet again across parts of eastern Kettleland. That will go away. We'll have morning sunshine. That will be replaced by thicker clouds this afternoon. Temperatures today will hit the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Near 50 degrees today in Rapid City. 32 are forecast high in Sioux Falls, 28 Aberdeen, and 33 in Pier. More details on the Kettleland Live Doppler forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. An officer and fire truck were almost hit by a driver while responding to a crash north of Castlewood yesterday morning. The Hamlin County Sheriff's Office says this is the second time officers were nearly hit. Officials say the crash happened around 7.30 on I-29. A truck was heading north when it lost control, went into the median and rolled. A doctor and nurse that were passing through stopped and helped the driver until first responders arrived on the scene. The driver suffered injuries and was taken to the hospital. Sioux Falls Police say they're investigating the missing puppy that was stolen from mini critters last week. Authorities are hoping someone recognizes the person in this surveillance video from the pet shop. The store owners say the puppy is an eight-week-old boxer. They believe the person was in the store earlier in the day before coming back at 2.30 in the morning to steal the dog. If you have information about the stolen puppy, you're asked to call Sioux Falls Police right away. Some students in Rapid City now have a job to do after meeting one of the police department's newest members. Students and staff at General Beadle Elementary met the newest member of the Rapid City K-9 unit yesterday. Authorities say the Dutch Shepherd doesn't have a name yet, so the kids have been tasked with choosing it. The department will take their suggestions and announce the name on Friday. I, Harley, having been appointed therapy K-9 within and for Pennington County, Meanwhile, the Pennington County Sheriff's Office officially welcomed its new four-legged member yesterday. Harley was sworn in as the Sheriff's Office therapy dog. The oath was given by Sheriff Brian Mueller, who recently took over the role as Sheriff. The oath includes providing love and support to county employees. Well, Governor Christy Noem will be delivering her State of the State speech later today, starting the 2023 legislative session. Monday, we talked with lawmakers about what they hope to accomplish in the weeks to come in Pier. Nursing homes may be one top priority. When you're in a larger city, they do better. 
Um, they, they seem to be able to, you know, make ends meet. It's when you get out in the rural areas that, that we struggle. But I think it's important to still have those nursing homes in the rural areas because people want to put their loved ones close to where they're at. I think we're going to hear about Medicaid expansion and the concerns around that. Uh, we're going to hear about families, foster care. You'll be able to watch a live stream of Gnome's Address right here on Kelloland.com. And you can follow the stories we do in Pierre during the session by visiting our South Dakota Legislative Session page. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. Well, today, still overall pretty mild forecast. We've got some chilly numbers to start the day. We've been seeing a few single digits popping up in our eastern and northeastern counties. By and large today, some filtered sun. I'm seeing a few of these uh, batches of clouds pressing through, but still, if we can manage the low 30s in Sioux Falls, mid 30s in central South Dakota, maybe winter will even uh, poke up to about 40 degrees, even Rapid City closer to 50 once again. That's a pretty nice day. Rapid City is definitely warmer just because of the lack of snow and the positioning of the Black Hills. Tonight, this little disturbance may produce a little snow in the air from Watertown to Marshall. I want to at least verbally acknowledge that. Uh, at this time, it looks to be pretty minor. And then tomorrow, the main story, a couple things here. We've got a cold front that's going to come through, switching the wind to the northwest. Uh, there is some snow chance still remaining in Custer and Hot Springs. I would say at best that's a nuisance amount. And most of that's going to track south into portions of Nebraska and Kansas. But one result of this is going to be uh, a steady north wind tomorrow night into Thursday. Now, where are we talking that? Let's look at the maps on that subject. This is today's wind. Most of these numbers pretty tame. They're under 20. We're not going to really call that out. Tomorrow afternoon, you see the James Valley starts picking up a little more wind, 15 to 30. The southeast, Yankton, Sioux Falls, Marshall, Slayton, Worthington, some 30, 35 mile an hour wind gusts, maybe a bit more than that. And what that usually does is it creates at least patches of blowing and drifting snow. I could see a scenario like that where you could start picking up some finger drifts. It won't take much. You know the depth of the snow. Some of these really deep areas is just sitting there right there on the side of the road and that'll move it across. So we'll just kind of watch to see how much of an effect that has, but it will be worth your attention to at least keep an eye on that. Uh, the bottom line is Thursday morning into the afternoon, we still have more wind in Minnesota. I do think that'll throttle down into Friday, so at least that's some good news there. Uh, Buffalo Ridge might pick up some wind Friday night into Saturday, but again, for the most part, we're not looking at any major uh, weather flare-ups. Now this first system, there it goes, south of us into Kansas and Nebraska tomorrow and Thursday. So I'm not going to say much for a chance of snow for most of Kettleland on that. Next week, the jury's still out on how these systems come out of California. And there's going to be kind of an ongoing uh, debate back and forth on whether or not this first one kicks out enough moisture to produce a little rain or snow in southern Ketherland. As drawn here, you bet it would probably be enough. I thought it warranted about a 20% chance of snow right now or a little rain. And then there's another one on its heels. Now, again, storm tracks, you're going to see probably things waffle back and forth. So don't get too locked in on that yet. That's We'll tell you when that gets better in the data. But right now, a lot of things are kind of unorganized on that. So that's what we know, and we will take it one day at a time. That's the way you got to do it. And today's highs as we take this first day, not bad. 37 in Yankton, 34 Mitchell. Tonight we're down to maybe some fog issues again in Worthington at 23, 22 our low temperature in Marshall. Tomorrow we're back down to 37 Rapid City. I want to include some snow chances in the far west. Sioux Falls area closer to 30. And then we are going to drop Thursday and Friday. We're going to be back down in the low 20s in Sioux Falls. No more chances of melting anything really at that point. Saturday, though, and Sunday, we could get to the low to mid 30s. I think that's probably the best shot at seeing some reduction in the snow. And we may not melt a lot, but 
At least it's a, tr a trial start. Uh, the Aberdeen area probably stuck in the low 30s this weekend. So overall, at least for now, no bitterly cold air. Keep in mind, for some of our locations, we've tossed in that 20% chance of rain or snow on Monday. Clearly not showing anything too cold in Pier, though. 30s likely for the weekend. I would say for Rapid City, we could be back to the 50s easily by Friday and Saturday. Check out the latest details online at kettleland.com.